Hi, Gary. Thank you for being on at the very last moment. Um, I want to ask you how you ended up in Franklin, New York, which is a fair distance from New York City after you'd had a store in New York and, and, and a real life as a fashion designer in New York. How did you make that transition and how did you find um, the, the building that you ended up in? Um, yeah, well, thanks for having me, Barbara, <laughs> and it's really <laughs> great to be here. Um, well, I had closed my business in 2018 of after 20 years, and I had been in New York City since I was 19. Um, and I met a guy named Sean Scherer, and he had a business in Andes, New York. And my friend Rebecca had a show in the back of his store. And so I just started traveling upstate uh, on the bus. And as I was kind of closing one business, as I was on the bus kind of going up, I would just do these calculations on my phone of like how many things I could sell to in order to make a living. <laughs> and <laughs> also what was happening, you know, I was you know I'm always designing I'm always thinking about different things but as I was going up I was just seeing things differently in a different kind of process in terms of my creativity and making clothes and and all the different things I was interested in and and after you know I I had stopped one business I just wasn't sure what I wanted to do and I really needed a break and I kind of just thought I never ever would leave New York City, like ever, right. ever even cross. We all my kind of felt that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And but when I closed my business, like closed the door, the last I just um and obviously meeting Sean, I just saw a different way of life. Yeah. And one thing that I'd been thinking a lot about and just being involved with is light. You know, and so in New York City, light becomes such a commodity in a way. And I had always worked in a basement. I I always had worked underground or had a place that didn't have giant windows. And whenever we would photograph anything, it was all about the light. Where we're we gonna get the light? We either rent a space that has a lot of light. So, you know, so when I was uh, when I was kind of coming upstate, I just started noticing all just I didn't have to worry about it. Right. So, and then and you'd also spend a lot of time at Mildred's Lane, right? Or some time at Mildred's Lane. And that was. Early. I had, yeah, yeah. So I had, you had that experience in the country as well there. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I, I had worked for J. Morgan Pewitt for right. the 90s for a long time, you right. know, Right. She was really my mentor. So I would always travel upstate, you right. know, with her. And then I did Mildred's Lane. And, you know, I went back and did. And so I had just, I think it was in me and I didn't really know, you know. And so right. then, and then I had this opportunity. Then Sean's like, well, what do you want? You know, and I was like, well, I just want a space that I can do my, make stuff. You know, I just want a space that I can you know, and then I said, well, I want an old brick built, you know, you have these fantasies. And we had just been looking and, and thinking about it and kind of trying to scrape, you know, finances. And it's like, oh, what can we do? And we went all over just looking. And then it really, I had gone to Franklin with Sean and I had bought this, uh, this uh, ginger jar, decoupage ginger jar from Phil, who has uh, Blue Farm Antiques there. And I got obsessed with this and I'll go into all that. But we then this building, what we had kind of just stopped. I was like, I can't do this. And I can't look at anything else. Nothing was kind of lining up, you know. And then this building just, you know, it just it just kind of came on the market and it had two different storefronts. And because of Morgan, really, I had always been attached to retail in some right. form. My design history and learning process, there was always a retail component, which I learned from Morgan because that's how she operated. The production was in the back and then retail was in the front. So there was right. always this direct to consumer aspect of making. And 
and that kind of carried through my whole career. Um, you know, I had a boutique at ABC Carpet and Home and at ABC Carpet and Home, I had worked um, in product development. So again, I was upstairs making, you know, decorative pillows, but then I would go down on the sales floor and see how they were doing. So right. when this building came on the market, it had two storefronts. You know, it had been a department store in the 80s. I mean, department store was kind of, you'll see, but you know, it's a bad, so it was just like, okay, it has all the things we need. It has space because um, one thing that I really kind of had to explain to Sean and all is like, you need some space to make clothes. Like clothes making is, you know, you need a five yard long table. I mean, I started small and it could start to go anyway. Um, so we just, it you was for it. Yeah. Yeah. And because I'm a, because I was living in New York and real, you know, you know, when you're looking for apartments, you're like, you got to get there first, you, gotta, da, 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 you know, like my neurosis set in. I was like, we have to see it today. We, you know, it was like February. And I was like, it's February. No one's going upstate right now. It's freezing. Let's go up. Let's look at it. And then we saw it. And, you know, we were just like, yeah, it kind of checks all the things. Right. You know, cool. We could live there. And I'm sure yeah. we're going to see more of it and more about it in the presentation so i'm going to um give you the floor now i'm going to mute okay. myself and take my picture out and you can get started with your presentation and then we'll catch up at the end as well okay okay all right, all right. Cool. thank you so this is this is 422 main street to the right and this is a postcard that Sean uh, found on eBay. And I'm so... not seeing your screen yet. Um, oh, okay. Sorry. I need to go share screen. Let me, oh, sorry. Let me do this. Great. Oh, you just disabled it, Barbara. How did I disable it? Um, I'm not sure if you go into screen share. Uh, I you just go into screen share? Yeah, or you just have to, if you go into security, I think. I'm just going to stop the recording for a sec. Okay. Pause with three. So this is our building um, at 422 Main Street. Uh, this photo was taken in 1909. And Sean found this on eBay, I think. We had searched. And it's, a, it's just a postcard from 1909. The building was built in 1890. And it originally it was the a bank and a post office um, with I think there was a dentist there too at one point, and you know a lot of what I do is I just make up stories. So of course I got obsessed with these three women who kind of became the kind of the origin story for me. Uh, for the building, and then subsequently for a lot of different uh, pieces of clothing. And I won't go in, I kind of promised myself that I wouldn't go into any of the stories too much, but this is the actual story, which is this is kind of what it really looks like, uh, what it looked like when we when we got it, we started uh, renovating it and it had been so many different things over the years including a department store that you know when I talked to locals you know they would really go there to get get everything because it was before Walmart um, it was before the the stores in Oneonta opened up so when we we purchased it I think every 
we had we kind of we inherited six tenants and they were all in there all different uses some people were living some people had studios um and you know when i was talking about light this was just kind of like a dream for me because i had never had this much light um in the city so this we decided that this would be my studio, the upper left-hand side. And so slowly kind of renovated it. We did this first so I could get in there and start working. Um, this is the outside of my office. And as I was moving upstate or when I moved upstate and visiting it's all kind of a blur I got to know Rabbit Goody at Thistle Hill Weavers and you know one thing that you know doing this kind of getting ready for this presentation I was like oh I'm always obsessed with motifs uh specifically decorative motifs so she was she is really she has one jacquard loom and she is really known for recreating these historic rugs mostly for house museums and um and so i started making clothes out of them and again just you know i think this was one of the first photo shoots i did with my my camera and you know um again just having light and access just to go outside and take a photo uh this is uh to mask from uh the lincoln house so i was calling it the lincoln jacquard and what was so great is i could work with rabbit on the different weft colors um and and create and then felt that felt them so it just was such a uh a privilege for me and just exciting to be able to design these fabrics and then again going to other kind of places and uh creating stories with them and then i'm really interested in filmmaking and so kind of roping my friends into helping me this is naomi yang on the left a filmmaker a musician and suzanne sasek who is a kind of a legendary lighting designer and this is a space now in delhi that's uh artist studios and when I moved up there, I, at the time, I had just started this collaboration with Pollock um, Interior Fabrics. And I had done all of this research in Rhode Island uh, with different historic locations. And this is in the back of Sean's store in Andes. And, and he offered me the space to do an installation and so this it's just kind of world building which i've all, always done and so somehow upstate it just felt a little easier you know i didn't have to worry about a landlord approving anything and and anyway so then it things started just to kind of free up for me and 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 this the the narrative ideas became kind of a little bit more fluid and part of more part of the process. Um, and so started filming things and this idea, the, the idea that I remember being in group there, my group therapy, I was like, I'm going to do this kind of reality narrative driven shopping experience and use real people and have their stories intermingled and so i had all these different agendas but one thing that was always really important is like how am i going to make money and this is so you know the one person i going back to j morgan pewitt is i learned packaging from her um you know, this is how I learned to fold tissue paper into a garment. Um, and this tissue paper was left over. You know, I saved certain things from my business um, that, you know, I just 
kind of held on to them one one was these this these tissue paper because they were really expensive but anyway and then the other thing is i created for this was a labor card um and the labor card was just really to show who works on the garment um this i think in particular in particular the first ones was me and this woman named lori <laughs> the, the two people uh working on the garments but i just thought it was just every sale i made um i wanted i didn't want any returns <laughs> i just thought you know the more the more beautiful to be the the less chances of become be coming back um and then just you know i think i took this photo because it was like the first shipment i did and i was so shocked that i could just do this i never packed a up i never did ups i never did shopify um i uh you know this was all kind of new to me it was i did everything myself i felt like i was kind of playing at business in a way i was felt like a kind of a kid that was like pretending um but anyway it was very exciting and you know and then as I was doing this, I was also developing, you know, this is very much Sean and I where, you know, he would find these pieces and then, you know, Gary, oh, you, you would like this. And, and so things just started to blur between him and I, and I would continue uh, my fabric development, fabric and print development. This is a, this is a transferware platter that I just really fell in love with. And, then it became known as the Lillian print based on one of the three women in, in the photo. And then Lillian and Marion kind of became these archetypes for me for 422. And the brief story is, is that they were um, entrepreneurs who came to the bank and were denied a business loan because mostly because of their gender. And so these two prints I had worked uh, with a company that does Wyndham, who I met in Wyndham in because they have a quilt store, but they actually their family runs it and they actually print all most of the fabrics for the the quilt community, the quilt business uh, print. so they so they did one for me. and um and then who is Lillian? You know, this is the Lillian dress that I'm still making. And this was kind of my, became my bread and butter. And again, light, you know, just kind of chasing the light because I'm not a trained photographer. So I was really dependent on natural light. And I just like how natural light hits fabric and textiles. And who is Lillian? Uh, this is the Lillian dress worn by Kara Walker. Uh, who is Lillian? This is Lillian um, worn by a woman, Jillian, who I met through you know just moving upstate my business and we've become friends and this photo is by Lauren Withrow and then who is Lillian um so this gets into who sees what you're doing in the middle of you know upstate and obviously social media and Instagram is kind of a calling card but you know I'm still using this print and I'll use the print until I run out of the fabric uh, this is a shot at our local theater in Franklin on uh, Cocoa Hill. And so, you know, the inside of my brain, it just, everything is connected, you know, and I started, uh, you know, just part of the bigger story. Uh, this is the ginger jar that we, we that I bought um, at Phil's store here in Franklin. Um, and created a print from it. I work with a uh, textile designer, Gina Gregorio, who is uh, heading up the textile department at Pratt. We've been working together for um, almost 20 years. Again, the Lillian and Marianne print the store, uh, you know, not going too much into the renovation of the store. It's always changing my relationship with the with the brick and mortar is always evolving. Um, and again, uh, working with Thistle Hill, uh, I think this was maybe one of the first or second fabrics um, I did with her. 
and really just simple shapes. I didn't, you know, uh, it was just me. Uh, so I was kind of, and I was scared to cut into the fabric. So a lot of these early pieces were really simple. Um, and then working with, uh, there was a woman up here, Wendy, who has a long arm machine that she does quilting for quilters. And so I got to know her and she started uh, teaching me about different patterns. And so this is uh, Bargello, um, which she created for me and quilted. And then this is like the or when we first opened, um, to the left is a young weaver who was weaving two pillows a weekend for a while. And then um, just like, why is, why is this store here in Franklin? Why are we here? What, what, are, you know, it's just, it's just all this, all these things kind of came up um, and how, you know, just being, open to the public and that whole experience um which i think is uh is incredible like an incredible thing that is retail and i'm not going to talk too much about it but i think it's just a whole area of life that has not really been documented and is so interesting and so multifaceted. Um, just keep, I just keep making pieces out of everything. I mean, this is a painting of this one, this woman who, when I bought the painting, I don't know, there's just something about her that's kind of ominous. And as the light hits in different times of day, her face kind of changes. Um, so yeah, you can just more pieces. Um, and, you know, one, this is a lot of the backgrounds are Sean's vignettes um, in our space. And again, just natural light, more, more box. My, the, our boxes have gotten a little better um, as um, my hand is in it. You can see the ginger jar in the back. And again, just more story building. This is a this is a nineteenth century. I think this is a Jacobian jacquard. So I started, you know, as I could afford, I, I'll I'll buy antique jacquards, which are my favorite thing. So this is kind of this kind of uh, Tarkovsky inspired shoot. Um, and then this is my friend Naomi wearing hers in Japan at a CD signing, which has always just been part of how I'm interested in these really, you know, fantastical narratives, but then this, this biting reality of reality and brutality of point of sale, which I've, I've always found really fascinating. Um, so process to the left and then final piece. Um, more working with Thistle Hill um, this is Taylor Foster, who's a, a, a model who's, she's been modeling her whole, whole life and she generously models for me. We're at one of the, we're uh, at the Pipacton Reservoir, which, which became just a complete fascination for me. Um, Lucy Sunt just wrote a great, well, a couple of years ago, a book about the reservoirs upstate and that the the reservoir kind of has this uh it's a really an, ama an amazing drive around because it's so quiet there's no cell service so it has this kind of really peaceful but foreboding uh feeling around this so i've i've created stories around that too and you just see the one of the research boards um, that I have in the store. Um, this is just, you know, another thing that Paul Delano is a local, uh, he's a rug dealer. Uh, he's an antique rug um, person and he he's lived up here and I 
he was actually spotted by Wilhelmina in the 70s. So, but I forced him to take this photo. And then the tapestry thing, I just, I really just, again, just using fabrics and piecing them together and patching them together. And that kind of evolved in this collaboration I did with Joyce Hong Kong that evolved over, you know, me talking to a salesperson there. And then finally, uh, having a meeting with a buyer who actually lived in Germantown. Um, and so I had a, actually, you know, a sales appointment with Joyce Hong Kong in Franklin, which I just thought was just so crazy. Um, so this was a, uh, like a 20 piece collection I did for them. And then, you know, all along, just keep going, making things is the, a sampler, some samplers I found, and then I piece them together. And again, a lot of things become symbols and, you know, I'm into these kind of secret meaning meanings to things um and just really again i'm gonna play around with the circle today and see if i can make this all myself and you know i'll play around with paper um and you know when i can afford it i'll, I'll hire a professional um, with no disrespect to the other models, but models become a big thing, you know, and then I'll, maybe I'll hire a model. So this is one day where I hired a model and a photographer. And um, yeah, and here is Coco and this circle experiment. And to the left is this large scale toile uh, that was given to me. Um, so I made that coat out of it and sold it. So, um, this is Hyde Hall. This is uh, to the left is the rug to the right. This is a remnant that Rabbit at Thistle Hill gave me. And um, this was during a tour. Uh, I took that photo of uh, one of the one of the other people on the tour. So this becomes kind of this another whole story. Um, and then, yeah, I just continued to um, create videos and movies and this idea of having a TV show or film and taking the narrative and the film. Voice all Father John's voice went out. And, you know, how that looks and, and all of that. And, you know, it's all, it's just all a work in progress. Um, and then I did this crazy thing because I got really obsessed with film and what I could do with it and shopping and stories and history and research and imagining this like amazing PBS show. Um, and I did it. I, I'm not going to go into it here, but um, this is a rug that to the left is a, is a rug, rug design of rabbits that I, that I bought different remnants of. And then to the right is a gravestone, um, Amanda. And I created this, dress um, again kind of focusing in on this motif like what what is this motif it's kind of at first i was thinking of it as alien fauna um and where they where they come from and who who makes them and so i took that in and expanded on it and this is Rabbit and the Jacquard Loom. This is an iteration of the Amanda dress. Um, but what was great about the Amanda dress was that it is sold all over the world. And, um, and it kind of, you know, it all, I've always been described as too esoteric. And so 
um, there, there's been some moments um, where that was kind of proven that I could sell to a lot of people. And uh, with Gina, one of our favorite things are engineered jacquards. Um, this is a Flemish engraving that I had used a long time ago, and we brought it back um, for this coat. And again, it's just world building and, you know, the set design and taking things from other things. And the Jeep to the right became a, a print. Uh, you know, I get really inspired by places and things. And then just kind of always going back to the store, like these are remnants from different experiments that Rabbit was doing that that she she gave me because she couldn't do anything with them and some of them were for Emily Dickin Emily Emily Dickinson house and so where I'm at is this is a project that I'm that I've been doing with the trustees of Massachusetts this these are the bullseye transom inside the old man's where uh, Nathaniel Hawthorne and and Ralph Waldo Emerson lived at different points. And so this is a whole uh, project that I'm doing and I'm gonna be doing, it'll be kind of finished in June. Um, again, just seeing pattern and getting obsessed with these different motifs and what they are and what they bring and, and then bringing it into uh the store and again just spaces and i just keep getting inspired by different spaces this is my favorite corner to shoot uh in the uh, it's actually the building next door it's this, this great light box uh, This is just more video, more film mm -hmm. ideas. Need a dress. And then again, just this is a, a small toile that we built up, and this became a whole story. And uh, this is Sean and I were in New Orleans, and uh, I took uh, some pieces with me and just met this, found this house and met the owner and started shooting there. And um, and it just goes on and on. This, I, you know, some people buy, I don't know, I buy when I can really nice fabric. And this is, uh, I bought this at Fortuny and made this gown out of it. And then shot it in this uh, beautiful house in New Orleans. And yeah, and this is a film that I had done called The Muse of Capitalism. So this is just this kind of Black Friday kind of thing. And anyway, they fight and one loses. That's it. Oh. Sorry, I messed up the end, Barbara. No, you didn't. It was beautiful. Thank you so much. So inspiring and just so, I don't know, on point of what, what this presentation is about, but also what I hoped to, uh, to kind of tell in my book, which is that once you're in the country, the inspiration you get is so much more authentic. And we don't really know that when we live that in the city. We think we need to get it out of magazines and tear sheets and books. And But really, as soon as you go into the countryside, especially upstate in Pennsylvania, they have such ancient cultures. And whereas maybe in the past when we were young, we kind of poo-pooed all that. Now it's just like a, a source of wealth um, that I think a lot of the people in, this, uh, in, in today's um, World Hope Forum are going to be inspired by. Um, and and hopefully, if they are urban, we have a better understanding what it means to live upstate, upriver, which is the the title of the book and 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 this world hope forum. 
And also, I just want to point out that you and Sean are not in the book because when I went was shooting it, you guys were renovating the whole building. Yeah. And every three months, I would call you up and text you and say, is it ready yet? Is it ready yet? And yeah. unfortunately, we completely missed it. So I'm so glad that you could do this and still be part of it in some way. Oh, yeah. It's, well, it's, thank it's you really for inviting me. inspiring. Yeah, the book is gorgeous. And I'm sorry we weren't ready. Um, and uh, But anyway, thank you. Well, thank you. Okay. And now I'm going to stop this.